Welcome to the Kelly Cardenas Podcast, where attitude is everything on today's show. This man is an amplifier. He's the guy who will make you feel <laughs> great in the morning. Uh, we met actually on LinkedIn. First, my, one of my, actually my first friend that I've ever, ever, ever like met developed a friendship on LinkedIn. He reached out to me and just, he just kept commenting. And you guys, I, I, I know that we're supposed to be um, uh, great human beings and, and not worry about the comments and the likes, but I can tell you this, my blood went, you know, my blood pressure went up when I got my comment from this guy because it was genuine. He, he was reaching out and it wasn't like, hey, I'm trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get this, trying to get that. He was just encouraging. And he's encouraging every single person around him. He encourages everyone around him with his story. He encouraged me and the inspiration that he is. And he constantly is just pumping up everyone else saying how great they are. But it's because of how great he is and what he brings into this world. This light is so amazing around this man. And he's the founder and principal of, uh, 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 and servant, he said, of Core 13 Capital. We're going to get into the 13 here in a bit. But please, please, please welcome to the show my friend, Mr. Tony Torres. It's a pleasure to be here, man. How you doing, brother? Oh, Always I'm, great to I'm, see in, you. I'm incredible, man. Now, uh, someone would give me a hard time when I first started the podcast. Uh, it was um, uh, Kool-Aid. So Kool-Aid, if you're out there and you're listening, she was like, what is that intro music? And Tony was like, I'm feeling it. Hit, hit, me, with, hit me with the feeling. Yes. So usually I'll go for a run four to five days a week. I'm not one of those fitness buffs that says, you know what? I, I got every victory this week where I went for a run five days. I ate all clean calories. No, I go for a run like four days a week. And I, um, I usually listen to a podcast on my runs instead of music, because you just you absorb more when you when you run and listen to educational things at the same time. And every time usually I'll listen to your podcast on either Thursdays or Fridays. And I'll, I'll be walking and then I hear that intro music and I'll go. Mm, mm. Oh, I love it, man. It's awesome. It's awesome. Hey man, I love it. Uh, well, thank you so much. I want I want to shout out a couple of our sponsors. Um, Samaritan's Feet it was one uh, Tony that a uh, guy named uh, Manny Ahomi. If you get a chance to be able to check this guy out, he st he he grew up with no shoes, and now he has provided man. over ten million shoes all over love the it. world uh, to to help to stop. Footborne disease, and it's SamaritansFeet.org. You see it running down or across the ticker. You need yep. to check this dude out. He's incredible. I'll check it out. Where I want to go to is I want to go to Tony's early stages because you talked to me about some stories that you uh, that that we had uh, or that you had within your life that it, it was triumph, it was perseverance. But I think that you have to have perseverance when you're from uh, Cleveland because uh, the war because <laughs> the Warriors seem to have the number. Of of the yes. of the of yes. Cleveland. So let's talk about that that perseverance that comes from being a Cleveland Cavaliers, a Cleveland Browns fan, and a Cleveland Indians fan. Well, we're gonna we're gonna chop it off there. So <laughs> I am a, a I am an Ohio State Buckeyes fan and a Cleveland Indians fan. Okay, that is it. That's that it. it. That's it. That is it. That is it. Um, the Buckeyes are near and dear to my heart. I've um, always been a diehard. And then the Indians, you know, they're, they're probably the only team that I have that everyone says, like, you can't be a bandwagoner. Because, I mean, a, an Indians fan is a lifetime of disappointment. I mean, they don't do anything. They, they're, I mean, if, if, they, if we can put 20 if, – if we can put 10,000 fans in the seats, we put that in the win column. Like, we don't even check the game out. We just put that in the win column. So – <laughs> um, but I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboys fan, oh, man. Tampa Bay Lightning fan, and in basketball, I don't really have a team. Okay. I, just, I, I, I rooted for the Cavs when LeBron was there. Then he left, and then I just kind of fell off with it. But um, so, yeah, you know, in, in my sports life, my, my, my Tampa Bay Lightning are in the, the Eastern Conference Finals right now, and the Cowboys, we are 0-0 right now, so we're undefeated <laughs> on our way to the Super Bowl. And we're doing big things, brother. A <laughs> hey, big, big shout out to my brother Torthel and to uh, Mindy, who's listening out there because they're both Cowboys fans. And as awesome. a as a Cowboys fan, you have to be completely disconnected from reality. Um, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, I, I mean, the, the reality is, is that there are 31 mediocre teams and one great team, and <laughs> I'm on the great team. So that's the, I'm, I'm, I'm really connected to reality that way. But uh, so, so talk to me about that. I mean, honestly, like for me, my, my unrealistic, unsubstantiated, mm -hmm. like love for the Titans and the Oilers yes. has helped me in business in every aspect mm -hmm. of my life. Because again, it, it, it adds perseverance. Like every year I'm thinking like you, I'm O and O we're going to the Super Bowl, And from, from my whole entire life, 47 years, we have not, we've gone to the Super Bowl once. We're going to go this year. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to play you there. Of course. We're going to play so, you there. But course, can you, can you talk to, um, I mean, Tony, you have, you have an amazing amount of perseverance in your life. And, you know, it. have you connect, have you connected those? I connect silly things. Like I connect I my too. fandom. I've connect my fandom with it. And I'm constantly hoping. I remember watching the Super Bowl when uh, Atlanta was up 28, three. And I remember looking at Tom mm -hmm. Brady and being like, if the one more play happens, this could work. That's where my mindset is. It seems yeah. like where your mindset yeah. is. Where did you get that mindset, Tony? You know, there was a real, so I mean, if we back up a little bit, my, yeah. my life started off in a real big discord, like a, like a huge dysfunction early in life. I came from a broken home, um, never slept in the same bed two nights in a row growing up. I mean, it was just, it was just not a good situation. So I, I, I kind of fell into some dark times early in life where I started like binging on food and I found my joy in food and uh, eventually got up to where I weighed about 360 pounds. And mind you, this gives you kind of like, if you're quick at math, I used to walk 36 holes a day, like three or four times a week golf and still was maintaining a 365 pound body. Hold, so hold if you on, can imagine, stop, stop right there. You were walking 36 holes at 360 yeah. pounds. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Now <laughs> help the audience to understand too. You said a broken home. What is, what's the definition of yeah. a broken home to you? So there's a lot of different definitions on that. So when I think of a broken home, I think of divorced parents, they don't get along and they, they fight over who is right despite their kids. Mm. So that's what, that's what I was a part of that dysfunction. And I was afraid of marriage a lot early in life. And it just, you know, so basically what happened was, is like when I, when I got to, I graduated high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, real estate wasn't even a thought process at that time. I just cared about getting the next $5 bill and having some fun. That was it. You know, so, um, so I, I worked in retail for a while and decided, you know, I kind of was going to go on the, the path that everyone goes down. I'm going to go to college. Uh, but at the time I couldn't get any aid for college. Um, and I was afraid of student debt. So I made the smartest decision of my life. I put, you know, like $15,000 on a 25% interest credit card at one swipe. And I was like, man, that, that's smart. I'll just do what everyone's doing and I'll go to college. So I, I went to one semester of community college and was out of money in about four months. So that was of a, a failure, I guess. Well, not a failure. I don't believe in failures. I believe in it's a lesson you're either successful or you're learning one of the two. <laughs> so, um, so from that point I worked in retail a little while and I was, that's when I got up to my heaviest, that was like 365 pounds, I think. And I, I live or I worked and my home course was a military golf course down in Jacksonville, Florida. So I would go after work and I would, I would walk like 36 holes a day, three or four days a week. So that means that I would get home and I would eat an entire pizza thing of breadsticks and a two liter of Mountain Dew in the evening. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was wow. just, that, that was just my life, man. I mean, it was yeah. just my life. So I got to a point to where I was just hitting like dead end jobs and, and all this kind of stuff. And I decided I was going to move to Greensboro, North Carolina, where my wife's family is from. Um, and I got up there and my father-in-law, he did 26 years in the Navy. So he said, Tony, you're at the age now. Why don't you try to join the Navy? Put your head down, go for it, and, and just bust it out. And I was like, I need a change in my life. So I decided, you know what, I'll go for it. So I literally ran 
in any kind of climate condition you can imagine. I literally remember Kelly running in a, in pretty much a blizzard. I ran in a blizzard. Yeah. I ran in like a hurricane rain in the heat. I ran in like 110 degree heat. I ran in, it was minus two one winter, no snow on the ground, no ice, but literally like minus two with wind chill. And I ran in it no matter what I ran in it. And I lost 180 pounds in eight months uh, wow. from doing that. I, I I didn't eat. I went like a month without a carb. That was the the month my wife absolutely adored me. She, I was her favorite person in the entire world. I didn't have a carb for a month. And, and she was so, she said, I just love this man. <laughs> no, I was just in a horrible mood for that time. And then I, I, I also went a month where I ate no more than 600 calories for a month um, each day. Uh, it, yeah. So I just kind of just went hard at it all to get denied from the Navy. I got mm. told no. So then I was back at square one, but I had my health. So that was, that was cool. I felt better. So I decided I was going to go back the school route. I, I went and enrolled at Liberty university. I got a degree in finance, played club golf at Liberty, um, graduated magna cum laude. And that that's, that's pretty much how I moved into to real estate was I, I was going to go healthcare finance and then I decided I was going to pivot and went into to real estate. But Tony, let's, yeah. let's go back a little bit because I think there's a lot of people out there that <clears throat> whether you're struggling with five pounds that you want to get off before summer, which some of us are, you know, th- some people are out there. Oh, yeah. There's some people who are saying, well, 20 would be good. And some people are saying, you know what, it's almost kind of a lost cause. Cause I just don't really know how to do it. You, yep. you, you, set you you had this thought that you wanted to go into the military and then you just mm-hmm. got up and started running right away i mean how how was that like take us through that and take us through the emotional yeah. part and then and help us to understand once you're like you're i almost see rocky happening for these eight months <laughs> you're, uh, you know you, you you yeah and then take yeah, us yeah. take us to the valley when you got mm-hmm. denied yeah yeah so First off, as anyone could imagine, it's not all easy, especially at the get-go. Like I can remember putting on my headphones and literally I went through like two weeks where I listened to nothing but a bunch of like stadium music and imagining this 25-year-old that he's playing for the Dallas Cowboys and putting Thunderstruck on to just run. And that's all I would do. And I would get sick. I mean, I would just get sick because it'd be 110 degrees outside and I'm 350 pounds at this time and I can't run that far. But I would literally get sick and just keep on going. Um, I don't recommend that to anybody. Like I, I was on a <laughs> deadline for myself. But, um, but then I would, I just pivoted my mind and I would put like anchors away on my headphones and I would listen to like the Navy song and just run to that because that's what my ultimate goal was. And I mean, it just honestly was just every single day I would try to run for like 20 seconds longer, 20 seconds longer, 20 seconds longer. And I got to the point where I was able to run three miles in like 17 and a half minutes. I mean, it was just nuts. Um, And then the hardest part was once I got down to my weight, I got actually down to my weight about a month before I had to go see the recruiter and go, go get measured and all that kind of stuff. Um, So the hardest part was maintaining that. I had to maintain because I was so big that I had all this loose skin and I couldn't, I wouldn't make it on measurement. So I had to make it on weight. So I had to maintain that 180 pounds for a month solid. So as you can imagine, that's very, very tough to do. You, you have fluctuations up and down, but to maintain that 180 is very, very tough. So um, just mentally just staying within the process and, and just keep on doing what I was doing. I would go run like three miles a day during that time just to maintain basically. Um, it was just an incremental process. You know, I started out with one mile, I would run for 20 seconds and then I would walk for a minute and then build that up to the point where I could run three miles, 17 minutes, basically. But then the the moment that you're, you're speaking of was the moment you get told no. Um, and that probably, that, that moment probably taught me more than any lesson in my life. And the reason why is because we in business, we as people, we have this tendency to see yes as an affirmation and no as an emotion. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we see, like when we want something and we get told yes, oh yeah, I got it. That's what I wanted. So I got it. It's an affirmation of what I wanted. But when we get told no, 
it's like, oh my goodness, it's just terrible. And it's, it's just, it, it breaks you down emotionally, especially when you work for, so hard for something. But what that did was I literally went the next weekend, my wife and I went up to Liberty and I enrolled in school. And what that did was it taught me that, you know, as believers, you and I, Kelly, you know, there are plenty of times where God says no. And we had this, this inflection point in our life where that if God doesn't tell us, yes, he didn't answer our prayers. And last time I checked, no is an answer. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, yes. and it, it's just having to, to get to the point where you can accept that it's not easy and it's not easy to hear no, even today. But it's when you can sit back and just say, okay, the answer is no, I have to pick up and move on. I've got to go. I've got to keep going because life doesn't stop and there's work to be done. So you just, that, that's really how I got through it. My wife was really instrumental in that. She, I mean, did she literally, there was a time when we were walking across a street while I was trying to get in the Navy and she was literally walking on the side that the cars were on so that no car would be able to get to me so that I wouldn't get hurt. So that if I went to MEPS and was trying to go in the Navy, they wouldn't be able to have an injury record of me. Like my, yeah, my wife was literally just as hardcore as I was for sure. That's incredible, man. I want to, I want to go back to uh, Tony because I think a lot of times, you know, people think that they're alone in the type of emotions, like the emotional eating aspect. Right. And so I, and I never really, um, I never understood this part until people started talking Mm -hmm. about it. And then I was like, man, yes. I mean, there's times where either I'm, nervous or I get down or whatever it is. And I go for yep. the food part of it. You, you experience this on a high level. Can you talk to the people out there that are maybe, you know, that are on that journey, but don't know they're on that journey? What would you say to them? I would say that just to really start pointing out the things that you do in your life and see how it's affecting you. You know, are you, you're either on one of two paths in life. You're either going down the road that you want to be on, or you're going down the road that life is forcing you on one of the two. And typically when, when food becomes an emotional crutch for you're going down the life that, or down the road life is forcing you on. So just, I would say that if you're in that position where you're finding emotional um, solace, I guess, in food, you know, take a step back and realize, you know, just try to think about where is it that you are and where is it that you want to go? And if food is going to help you get there, then awesome. If it's not going to help you get there, then talk to those around you, talk to your circle, talk to me, even get on LinkedIn and find me and, and find a way to get to where you want to go. Um, I'm reading a book right now called atomic habits. I'm sure you've read that book. Uh, and did you, do you remember the part in there where it says, a bagel with peanut butter is not a good or bad habit when you eat it every morning. For someone trying to lose weight, that's a bad thing to eat in the morning. It's a bad habit to wake up, and make a peanut butter bagel. For someone trying to bulk up and muscle up, that's a great habit to have. So it's whatever you are finding your solace in, if it's not productive for where you want to go or where you envision yourself, talk to somebody. Don't fight that battle alone. Find somebody that you can say, I need help and let them help you. What's the biggest misconception about carrying extra weight? And from a person who did, you, you were up at, at 350 pounds, what was the most insensitive thing that people did or said to you during that time outside of, I mean, obviously there's the, the parts that, that someone's going to say a nasty comment, but a yeah. lot of times, like, talk to the, uh, like, help me to understand what people shouldn't say to you even if they're trying to help or whatever it is, what were those, what were those things that you went through? I think that the thing that people shouldn't say to you is to, and they mean it with all good intention. They do mean it with all good intention, but a lot of people will tell you that you're doing a great job. Like if you're trying to get better or if they'll, they'll give you like false compliments, like, Oh, you're not that big, or at least you're, you're confident in yourself. But you need somebody that's going to tell you what you don't want to hear to light you up. Cause when it's when somebody loves you enough to tell you what you don't want to hear to help you wake up, it's those that are also going to go through that fire with you. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's, it's that's that, those are the kind of things. And I hope that I'm answering your question the right way because I was never one that got picked on a lot. I, I didn't. I always had a jovial spirit. I was always the, 
the high life person. I know I didn't get made fun of a lot, um, but there are those that battle the same thing that do. And I think that they either, they struggle in relationships. Like if they're a guy, they struggle with, with a girl or they, they struggle making friends or they struggle with their confidence. You know, it's, it's making sure that you have people around you that could care less if you're big or small, they're going to go through that fire with you. And that's, that's it, man. And, and that's what I try to, I try to do within my business as well is like, I tell people like, if, if we're going to partner on something, I'm with you till the end. Like I'm, I'm going, we're going in it. And if we fail, we, we not fail. If we learn, we learn together. We don't, <laughs> we don't, I'm not going to dip out of you and I'm going to give you the confidence. And I'm going to go in that with you. When somebody sees Tony and, and they, they hear your faith, and it's evident, like it's evident around you in your videos on LinkedIn. If you're not following him, Tony Torres on LinkedIn, you need to check him out. Um, but it's evident. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of times people see it and there's sometimes people will turn down be like, well, I can't connect with Tony because he's already in that place. Can you start us off down that faith journey? Because yeah. it's never, like, you're never born. I, well, I hope you weren't, Tony, because then you're just some supernatural human being. No, but I'm not. We, we start with milk before we eat meat. Yeah? Yes. And yep. in, yep. Your, in your faith now, people see you, and again, they're like, this is this light, this light that encourages everyone that is like, you know, I, I don't, uh, if I don't succeed, then I learn. I don't fail in life. And all these, and it's like, wow, this is amazing. But some of those people out there are thinking, man, I ain't at that place where there's enough substance for me to have the faith. Can you walk can yeah. you walk us through your journey? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's number one, I think for anyone out there that is that is in that place where they don't have that faith built up, where they don't have the the like the the foundation of their life built up, there's two things that you, you have to understand. Some of those people out there never, are thinking Man, hold on for a second. I ain't at that place where there's enough substance. Got it. Sorry about that. That that was okay. my voice. That was my voice coming through. I apologize I love about it, man. that. I love that, it. That's why live uh, TV is so fun. It is. I think that there's two spots in this. There's like your foundation of like who you are as an mm-hmm. individual. Yeah. And you have to you have to reconcile with yourself that if you have I mean, lofty, lofty dreams and ambition. Like if you want to, if you want to own the Titans one day, you know, like, like Kelly, if you want to own the Titans, you got to be able to get to yourself and through in your mind and your heart that you, if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. Wow. And that is a huge thing to overcome, but you have to, you have to accept like in my industry in real estate, if I never get a single, another door. Like if I never, never own another door, but I lead one person to Christ, is that enough? That's enough. You know, you know what I'm saying? And that's how, that's how I have to, I have to keep reminding myself of that is that sometimes the mission that you're on, you're only on the Avenue to fulfill a different mission. Mm. Like, like you're, you're, you're a hair salon guy, you know, what if your entire mission in life, you know, God has a funny way of doing things. And what if your entire mission in life was not to cut hair? It was to cut 10,000 people's hair to get to one person that you needed to witness to, to lead them to Christ. Wow. What if that was the mission? What was, what if that was the whole thing? So I think to answer your question, it's really just make sure that you are enough with yourself and that you that you don't need the, amb- the ambition and the, the thing that you're striving for to realize how valuable and important you are. This is just stuff. It's all temporary. Everything here, buildings, money, uh, hair salons, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, well, they, they, they live on for eternity. They live for eternity. The other, the other 31 teams, they, 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 they go away, but um, I mean, it's, it's, it's all, it's all temporary <laughs> and it's it, the, the greatest thing that we can do is how we can use these things to have an impact on things, on, on people. Because last time I checked, you go to a funeral, I've never seen an apartment, a house, money, cowboys, ain't no cowboys going to be at my funeral. Um, hair salon or any, anything. There's only people there. 
That's all that matters. So the impact that you have on people, use the things that you're doing to build your confidence and use that as your avenue. And that's what we do. So Tony, how do you deal? This was a, a big thing this morning, right? And, and you saw the video this morning about comparison. So I was down at the beach yeah. this morning and comparison hit me hard yesterday. Like really, really hard. It hit me in every aspect of my life from the financial side, yep. the personal side, the professional side, the spiritual side. It was comparison, comparison, comparison. And, and it, it could be, and you could be in any situation. I don't care where you're at. Yeah. I'm saying like you have a plane, then you see your buddy with five planes. You're like, man, I need four more. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, I, a, I a Dal- yep. you're a Dallas Cowboys fan and you're like, damn, like there's a Titans fan. He's so much better than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that could be a bad comparison because you'll never get to that level. If you're a Cowboy fan, you'll never get to the level of heaven as a Titan fan. So if I'm a Cowboy fan, I got to liquidate rings to get down to your level. I mean, goodness gracious. Man, but see, I live in the present, man, not in the past. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm with you. So I do. So so help me to understand how, how, and especially in the real estate game, Real estate game is all about the driving up in the car, showing the house. This, you know, I got this money, I got this flash, I got that. How do you stay outside of comparison, man? I think the way that you stay outside of comparison is it goes back to what I just said. You've got to be enough with yourself. You've got to say, this is my path, this is my journey. You know, it's you can look at everybody else on LinkedIn, and everyone will say, you know, you've got to write your own book. You, this is your journey. But then a lot of you says, well, if I'm writing my own book, then why am I over here reading your book? You know what I'm saying? So don't let the influences of what you see from a 45 second clip on LinkedIn or Facebook, Twitter, be the influencing guide to what your life is. You know, that that is I mean, I I know of 66 books that are a lot better guide than than uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you know, 66 books that. (laughs) <laughs> it can kind of be a little bit better, you know. Um, How long but, ago were they written? Oh, goodness, man. I don't know. Dead Sea Scrolls are a long time ago. Hey, I, hey I even, and Tony, I, this this is a thing that, that's crazy, right? So every time that I look and, you know, whether it be uh, – you know, I'm gonna call myself out in this stuff. Every single thing that that I speak about, every video that a person sees from me, I, I stole that stuff. I mean, that is course, it's yeah. it's straight proverbs. Um, you know, it's it that's what it is. And but talk to me too, because in the real estate game, which is very connected to the self help game and the self uh, uh, personal development side, how do yep. you help to draw the line, knowing that because my pops was always saying oil and water. He would say, boy, oil and water don't mix. You can shake them up. They'll look like they mix, but then they settle and they don't mix. Yep. He said, you can't mix God and man, yeah. you can't. How do you yep. stop it from doing that? How, because I'm human. I run through this stuff every day. Tony is on a different level, guys. Tony's on that next level. Know, he's I'm, a, I'm, he's I'm, a Cowboys I'm fan. He's a Cowboys <laughs> fan. He's on that next level. Amen. Amen. I mean, so, I'm glad that you see it, brother. I'm glad that I mean, you see it. Cause... And then then that next, next level is the Titans fan. So I'm just oh, saying, good. like, and and I'm big waiting. shout out to John and Jamie Robinson because they, I mean, they're the, uh, he's the general manager of the Titans, and he knows. He knows. Oh, he knows. I, yeah. I mean, I know, too. I'm over here trying to help a Titans fan by getting, <laughs> by getting Derrick Henry on your show. I mean, I'm trying my best here. But, um I think that, I mean, going back to what you said is, is comparison. Comparison is the root of all evil. People say that money is the root of all evil, but money is just, it's just money. Um, I mean, again, if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. Mm -hmm. So stop comparing yourself to other people. The reason why is because number one, you don't know other people like, you know, I am all about the go. Like I tell people this all the time. Like I am a stretch goer. I like I want to meet Kelly. I will literally drive to Nashville to meet Kelly. I'll do it because the, the, the intent and the emotional connection there is stronger than you see what on LinkedIn or on Facebook, you can't compare what somebody puts for 45 seconds and say, Oh man, they're, they're an overnight success. I mean, they just, they, they've done all this, <laughs> this stuff and I haven't even gotten there yet. Well, you don't know what they've got at all. I mean, you're just, you're just seeing something that they, they tend to put out. And I just don't, it's something that we all battle with. I'm human too. I I see, you know, when someone's closing on an asset that I'd love to be closing on, it's, it's, 
we're all human, but I just come back to myself and I say, you know what? No one's paying my car bill. No one's putting my foot in front of my other foot. No one is dealing with my life and I'm not dealing with other people's lives as well. So successes are 45 seconds. It, you, you, you have to understand what it is that you want, what it is that you believe in and what it, the way that you're going to take to get there. And that's, that's what you just have to keep telling yourself. And that's what really makes the difference in, in your journey. How did you like as a kid, right? So I want to take you back when I was in, I remember when I was yeah. in fourth grade, my dad went off the deep end with church. We never went to church ever in my life. And yeah. then one day he was like, we're going to church and we're going three times a day. And we're going to uh, rename our dog from uh, bandit to Elijah because it has a bad spirit by being named bandit. And we're going on Wednesday. We're a part of the church. We're all this stuff. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. And then I remember yeah. them saying like, yo, and they didn't say, yo, they, they were like, um, you know, cause they were a little stiff and they, they were like, you need to give your heart to the Lord. And I was like, I ain't trying to give nothing to nobody. I don't know. And <laughs> right, I'm and, with you. You know what I'm saying? And so I went through this and I'm 10 years old. My son is 10 years old. Maddox is. And so I'm going through this and I'm like, I ain't trying to give nothing away. Like I, I'm trying to gather stuff. And, right. but then it was this progress, right? And then and I remember then he put it on my heart, like, you know, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And then I did, but then I hid from him. I put my head, you know how when you would hide when you were a kid, uh, when you were like playing hide and seek, you would hide your head and your body would be out from the bed and you, you would think that nobody could see you. And I hid from him. And it went in stages. Start us off with where, oh, I think we lost Tony there for a second. Tony. Tony, Tony. Yeah, hold on. You back there? I, I'm, I'm, logging, I'm logging back into my, my entire power just went out. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. That's why I love, I, I'm, what I was saying is, is uh, as, a, as, as a young kid, and for those of you out there listening, I love, uh, I love live um, because there's, there's, the, there's life that happens. But what I was talking about earlier is the fact that in the event that you're hiding, right? You got me, Tony, right? Yeah, I got you. So in the event that you're hiding, as a, as a young kid, I would be hiding, and I would stick my head under the bed, and I, my whole body would be out, but I would think that because I can't see you, you can't see me. This is the way I, uh, my relationship was, was with God. Like, I accepted him, but I was like, I ain't trying to act like, I heard what you said because then I'm going to be held accountable. Talk to us about your journey through it. Um, and, and specifically, like as far as little Tony that's running around, I mean, did you, like when you heard of this God, like I thought God was this, you know, like that guy that wore a white robe and he jumped from cloud to cloud. That's how I saw it. Like sweet. That's how I saw yeah. my sweet baby Jesus. You know I'm what I'm saying? It. So yeah. how did you see yours and what was your relationship with, like as a, as a young kid and how did it grow? You know, when I was younger, I didn't grow up going to church at all. I didn't grow up in that. My, my, on my dad's side, he, they're all Catholic and my, my mom's side, they were, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, when I was like 10 years old, we started going to church and it was more of just a, a way for me to have something to do. You know I mean? It wasn't really, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that can relate to that. It was just something to do. I mean, it wasn't like a, I just kind of went into class and I got free dinner and, had, you know, some Kool-Aid or some Mountain Dew. And, you know, I, I made best friends with the pizza. We had a pizza delivery guy that was in our church choir and I made best friends with him and he would bring me like a pizza once a month. Um, and <laughs> I mean, just like, it was, it was just more of just, it wasn't about God for the longest time. Like I, I went, I went into church and just wanted to have like a, maybe a release from life, maybe just wanted friends. Um, and I figured, you know, people in church, they can't, they can't say anything bad to you. They all, they, they, I mean, they have to uplift you. I mean, that's, that's kind of like the kind of goes with the job description, right? I mean, it's just, <laughs> you can't just say, oh man, Tony, you, you, no, I don't know about you. I'm not letting you in heaven. This guy over here though, he can go to heaven. He gives more money. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, I think that that's what happened a lot. And then I used it. I was in youth group and I was pretty involved in youth group. Um, went on a lot of trips. We did some mission trips and, and stuff like that, but I didn't really start getting 
like really gritty in my faith, Kelly, probably until you get to a point, and I know that you've probably been here before, where you get to an inflection point in life and you start realizing that you can't do it on your own. Like you just, you just can't. Like, I mean, when, like, and I think that, I mean, I've had these before, you know, in like earlier in life and stuff, but I think my biggest one was going back to like the Navy when I was trying to join. And I realized when I'm running out there, it's 115 degrees outside and I've got a hoodie on and sweats to try to sweat as much as I can. I mean, you're praying while you're running and you realize that physically you can't do it on your own. You, you, you have to rely on somebody, but I don't have anyone right here. Who do I rely on? I had to rely on God. And God, he, he saw me through that. And I, you know, and I look back on it and it was never in the plan for me to join the Navy. I, it was just never in the book. The whole reason for that was so that I didn't have a heart attack at 30 years old. It was so that I would be able to live and see, you know, my daughter born and live a life to where I was going to go achieve greater things than being in the Navy. I just used, God just gave me the Navy as a, as something to focus on materialistic here. Um, and I firmly believe that. And then I remember being in college. I was in college with a wife and a, and a newborn. I mean, I literally started school a week after my daughter was born, like a week. Yeah. And I was a full-time student, a full-time employee. I played college club golf and I was a part of the finance and accounting associations with my school. I did all that. I graduated magna cum laude. And the only way I was able to do that was God gave me the strength to do it. That was it, you know? And it's just these inflection points that you have in your life that you realize how faithful God is to you when you realize what you cannot do on your own. And that is what really builds your faith. That's what really builds the strength that you have to go do amazing things um, is when you start realizing you can't do it on your own. So Tony, a lot of times, uh, you know, I think that growing up in that or, or people associate faith with almost getting rid of doing well, whether it be in their business or financially or whatever it is, they're like, I can't do both. Like I've got to either do one. I've got to be this, you know, I've got to be this complete servant or I go and get money and that's going to be the root of all evil. But it seems mm -hmm. like you found a place where you've been able to bring your faith into your business. I mean, he, even core 13 capital, yep. core 13 capital, Yep. That people are going to check out on LinkedIn when you when you look at that. That's all based around your faith. Help, help me to understand this yep. because you are not. Um, so there's there's a lot of times where people will be like, I, maybe I don't want to say that because I don't want to offend a lot of people. But Tony is just Tony, no matter what. Like, help us to understand yeah. that. How does how does that work? Tell us about yeah. core core thirteen capital right off the bat. The core thirteen capital is. Everyone that has a pulse today has heard about real estate investing. It's no, it's no foreign secret to anybody. But what is really foreign is that the reason why we do this and every single, there's just this like paradigm between what financial freedom and independence is and what reality is. Like people think that, you know, okay, I've got all this passive income coming in so I can just go sit on the beach and I got nothing else to do. Well, what do you do when you get all the money that you, you want? What do you do from there? Like there's gotta be a greater purpose. For, for what it is. So we started Core 13 to be on mission through real estate. And what got me like really focused on this was when I started this journey, I knew what my faith was. I knew what my foundation was. I knew what the kind of business that I wanted to be as an entrepreneur and not have it be the prototypical greed way. I wanted to make a difference and use business to do it. So I started I've always had a heart for an organization called Compassion International. I'm sure you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. And I started, I, I know a couple of people that work there and I started just looking on their site and I saw these astounding site or statistics on there that what the global poverty level is and how many people live in it. So check this, Kelly, the, the global poverty level is $1.93 a day, that or below, okay? There are almost 700 million people in the world that live at that level or below. So flip that. And we're trying to buy real estate assets with swimming pools in the backyard. Yet there's people over here in the world, 700 million that are looking for a bottle of water to drink 
and they're praying to the same God that we pray to for water. Wow. So I said, why can't I merge the two together? Because I don't need that much money to live. Like I'm content. I can, you know, I'm, I'm good. So it, it, it doesn't take me having, you know, a hundred million dollars to be fine. It doesn't take that much. So my wife and I, we sat down and we said, you know, what is it that we want to do? And this isn't just to like Compassion International. Like we want to partner with churches and missions and do things here domestically and, you know, internationally. But 30% of everything that comes in through Core 13, we're going to donate it. We're just going to give it away. And what I'd love to do, like my stretch goal, is I want to partner with a group of individuals where we go buy a big asset and all the money that comes from that goes to missions, both domestically and globally, to mm -hmm. be able to help people. Because if we make the stretch, God honors the stretch. I believe that. Wow. So, so it's, uh, what do you, what is the maybe top three things about real estate investing that you yep. wish that you wish people knew that you know that's normal to you, but it's not normal to the normal investor that is thinking, I'm just going to buy six houses. It's going to be passive income, and then I'm just going to sit somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So you can buy six houses, but they're likely not going to cash flow very much to where you're going to be able to sit anywhere. You're going to keep on buying because they don't, I mean, I know that majority of people have seen the prices of things and where interest rates are going. So it's a lot harder to make that work. Second is that just because if you're in the commercial space right now, which that's an area that I, I focus on, I focus on multifamily, build to rent and golf courses. Got golf it. courses are awesome. Yes. Um, so what I would say is that when you, when you go invest in anything or you're looking to invest in that kind of stuff, don't first look at the deal. Don't look at the actual asset itself. Look at the person who's going to operate that deal that you're investing in because the integrity of that person will tell you how they're going to treat you and your money because if they're a high integrity person, whether they're a believer or they just have high integrity, they're going to see your money as an extension of you and your family and how this is going to impact you and your family whenever they operate something. And that's how I look at everything is I try to make sure that everything that I do, I understand that if I'm doing something with Kelly Cardenas, I am doing something that is going to directly impact Kelly, his wife and his two kids. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having an impact on that. So, I mean, how big is that? You know, so it, it's, it's, it's really operating that way is what we want to do. Because if I do right by you, imagine the impact that we can go have together on missions. That's it, man. And, and I think that that's the lesson. That's like two lessons in one uh -huh. is really just have people at your heart, not money at your heart. Yeah. What would be what would be your third one that you see out there a lot, and that's a, that's a, a misconception of, yeah. of real estate? I think a, a lot of it is just that people they're they're so they're so antsy to own so many assets that they don't really pay attention to what the economy is at. They don't they don't even plan for like what they want to do where they where they think the economy will be in a year. They're just jumping on because they think that all. 50 million other people are just jumping on every other asset. So they need to just go grab the lemonade stand down the street because the lemonade stands for sale. <laughs> like they, they don't, you know what I'm saying? They don't think about what they're doing. They just say, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I can't get that. So I need to go get that right there because if I don't, then all these people over here are going to come get that. But you know, it's the misconception is, is that there's a lack of deals. There's always deals to be had. There's always a way to enter the market. There's always ways to make money, just make sure that you, you keep grounded, keep your integrity, keep your morals, keep your faith while you do it. So Tony, help me to understand too, because my brother and I were just talking about this last night <clears throat> and he was asking, um, you know, was it the right time for him to buy a home? And it, when he was saying, he, he wasn't so much asking, was it right for him? He was asking in this, in today's market, we live in California, uh, Southern yeah. California, and uh, to be even more specific, Carlsbad, California, which. Oh, uh, Callaway and Taylor made golfer out there. Oh, it's, yes. And it's the best place in the world. Although none of you need to move here. None of you. Um, I'm not moving there. They're listening. This is the, I mean, but it's the greatest place in the world. But 
he was asking about it because he was saying, you know, in, in today's market, people keep talking about an adjustment. People keep talking about it can't continue to grow the way it's grown. But I said that nine years ago, looking at a house at 800,000, thinking, man, there's no way it could get to a million. And now I'm looking at that same house and saying, it's 1.6. There's no way it could get to two. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't think that the way I look at it, from, I guess there's two advantages to this. Like, is now the right time to buy? I say it is. I mean, when, when interest rates are really, really low, a buyer has no leverage. It's a seller's market at that time. They can sell that thing for whatever they want. Now interest rates are kind of at a nominal rate. You have the ability to go and kind of use a little negotiating power. Okay. Um, you do. Uh, I think though that the market will always appreciate. So if you buy something, if you see something right now for 300,000 and it fits your return structure and it fits the business plan you're trying to do and you've got the, the, the means to go do it, you better go do it because in five years, that 300,000 is going to turn into 450,000. And so you, you, I think one of the, the biggest things when you have the means and you're, you're ready to go is don't second guess sound judgment. Whoa. Like if you feel, if you know that it works, like, you know, it works. So, so often we get this analysis paralysis. We get this, I'm just going to sit on the sidelines and wait for something I'm, I'm going to wait for a correction. Like, I, you, you don't know how many times I've heard, like, I'm not investing in real estate right now because I know what's coming. Well, how do you know what's coming? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, how do you know? Like, I mean, it's, it's, just, it, it's just not something that is trackable to know what the future holds in 10 years. I mean, it's, it's, we don't even know. We might be gone to heaven in 10 years. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. So I think that when you look at something, if you have the means to do it and it makes sense, do it. Mm. That's it. Because if you don't do it, you're going to be like what you, what on one of your previous podcasts says, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're already at no, <laughs> if you don't, you're already there. So the worst that could happen is you stay at no. I mean, it's just, and my uncle has a saying, he says, no's are free. Wow. He says, no's are free. So no's are free. Keep on banging on doors because eventually one of those doors will open. So talk to us about here and no, because uh, in the real estate game and just in, in Tony's life, you have become accustomed to hearing no, you turned that, that failure, what most people call failure, you turn it into a lesson. Yep. Talk to us about that and how important is that as you move forward in business and life and your relationship and your marriage? Yeah, I think that I want to make something really clear, Kelly, is that when, when we hear no, it always hurts when it's something we want. Like that, no one is immune to that. You know, like you've been a Titans fan for so long and I've been a Cowboys fan for so long. We get told no every single year. We get told no every year and it hurts, man. It's, it, it's just painful. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's Jerry Rice was one of the best at what he did, not because he was a great receiver, but because he saw every single opportunity was the here and now, and then tomorrow I got to go get better. Like he's known for like, he won a Super Bowl, And then the next day he was at the training facility running routes after a Super Bowl. Like one of my big greatest role models is not because of him necessarily personally, I don't know him personally, but just as, as a golfer and as just a, a man is Tiger Woods. Like that dude, he's gone through his horrible divorce thing. Like we all know about that, but then he's had, what five back surgeries two knee surgeries a car wreck he's walking on one leg right now he won a u.s open on a broken leg and he he refuses to let the word no tell him that he can't do something like he he refuses to do it and i it's not something i'm immune to like i mean if someone tells me no and i've worked hard for it it's it's tough but i think that the real strength comes from okay i was told no now I pick up and I go on to the next thing. You don't let no be the emotion that holds you back. You let it be the springboard that pushes you closer to the next yes. I love it. I love masters at what they do like you um, because like true masters aren't trying to tell everyone you got to do it like this. The humility that you have and you've mastered your craft, you're one of the top at and, 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 and doing it. How do you stay in that humble state? Like, what are your bumpers? I've got yep. a bump. I've got a bumper in my life called Brooklyn. It's my wife. She yep. and she seriously, she'll be like, "Shut up, dummy!" Like, 
Shut, shut yeah. it down. It's not complicated. Keep it simple. And you know what I mean? She's yeah. like, all, all I need is some coffee, some hip hop, and some lipstick. That's all I need. And I'm good to go. She's gangster like that. Who's your bumper? What's it, your man. bumper? I love it. Number one, my wife is instrumental to me. And a lot of it is because I'm a pain in the neck to deal with at times. And she puts up with it. You know what I'm saying? But she has, she's really been a bumper to me to where if I get overinflated on something, she'll say, well, don't, don't let it, you know, get you down. Don't, don't let it, you know, there's always tomorrow that, you know, you never know something good might come, come back, you know, something good. She'll, she'll lift me up. And then if I get too high, she'll say, Tony, you're being a little too high right now. Like you need to, you need to level yourself out. And I think that what, you know, my daughter, she does a lot of gifts for me too, because, you know, she's so smart, she's beautiful. And, but you ever, like your two kids are in school and you start realizing you got to help them in school and you realize how much stuff you don't know that they're dealing with in school. So it's, it's, it's just, it's when you have like family dynamics that come in and they show you like, you're not that smart, but you're still amazing and you're still awesome. And you, you're great at what you do. You have a passion for what you do. It's just to keep the, the highs and lows really balanced. And my wife is great at that. She bumpers me back down. My daughter's great at that when she says, daddy, can you help me with this? And then I get there and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And then I, I just got to figure it out. It's just, those are the things that are humbling is when you're not told yes, or you just go in and you crush it every single time you do something. Those are the bumpers that really keep me in, in lane. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. When is the last time specifically that you questioned your faith? Oh man, <laughs> that I questioned my faith. Like, okay. So when you say that, like, do you, do I question whether I believe in God or do I question my salvation? Which one? Um, I mean, either or, I mean, I'm saying like, you know, I, a lot of times, like I had one guy tell me this, Tony, he said, man, I had to stop listening to you. And I was like, why? And he said, because you're, you're really positive in your life. And like, my life isn't that positive. So I can't listen to that because your life isn't real. And I was like, dude, do you realize? And I was talking to him and like three weeks before my mom had just passed away. And I had told him that, and I had to do one of the largest speaking events that I had ever done. And it was three weeks after my mom had passed. And, you know, so obviously I want to be positive with it, but I want people to know that, I mean, there's times, there's dark times. Like I posted that thing, you commented on it, where I did an interview. I'm smiling in the interview, but I had just got crushed in business like two or yeah. three days before, you know? Yeah. And that causes sometimes to be like, yo, God, like what is happening? You said that you were going to do X and you're not doing it right now. I, my sweet baby Jesus for me is like, I'm, I'm in his face. I, I want to know. And, and there's times where I, I question it. I mean, that's why I'm saying like, I want to know if I'm human. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, oh, you're like, human, man. You're human. You like, know, like, you know, I think I look at like core 13 doesn't even have a website. Like I'm in business working in real estate. I don't even have a website. Like hmm. I think of all these, these, these people that are ahead of me that have websites and they've got all these lists and stuff that they're working with and their, their systems are in place. And I, and I think of like how I've lost so much money and I think about, you know, I got laid off from my job and I think to myself, you know, like, God, what is it that you want from me? like, what, you know, is it, did I do something wrong? Did I, you know, did I go down the wrong path? Am I, do I belong in real estate? Do I belong in business? Should I be just, you know, working in the mission field or working, you know, what is it that you want? What have I done wrong? And I, I mean, th those questions come up a lot, man. I mean, we're human beings, you know? So one thing I don't do is I don't question God's being real. I don't do that. I question sometimes if, the path that I'm on is what I'm meant to be on. You know what I'm saying? And that goes back to like what I told you a minute ago. Like, what if you're, you're, you're master hair salon, you know, like, you know, I, I even want to come out to Carlsbad, California, so you can, you can <laughs> fix my hair for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's like, what if your purpose, the whole thing is not for hair? Like, like God trained you to cut hair, to talk to people so that you're, one millionth client could introduce you to somebody that you could witness to, mm. to have them 
come to salvation? Like, what if that's the entire plan? You know what I'm saying? Like, what if that's the whole thing? So I look at it from that perspective. And like, this is not all, for all listeners out there, this is not all like, you know, one hour Tony's always on the high. And there's plenty of low times, like when I get a deal shot down or something didn't work out, like this golf course that we have a, um, we're going to sign the PSA on. I mean, that has been a two month grind over negotiations and trying to figure out, you know, different legs of that business and being told no by lenders, being told no by insurance people. I mean, it's, it's been a lot of no's lately, but it's just understanding what the big picture is and realizing that if I can impact one person and, and you make sure that you stay on that path, then all the no's, they all line up to a yes. And all the time that you think that, you know, am I really saved or is, is my faith real? There's been, look, go look at the Bible, go read all 66 books. You'll find some times in there that people were really tested in their faith. Like think of like David, like that dude, he, he, he had a man killed for a woman on a rooftop. I mean, he, he had her, her husband killed. I mean, that dude went through some trials. I mean, think about that. So I think that that answers your question is just to really don't question your salvation and just question, you know, is this the right path for me? And a lot of times you'll get the affirmation that you're looking for. Well, I, I, and I appreciate it, man, because, you know, the, those kind of things are, are, are massive because any t- again, I had, I had one guy say that, uh, he said, um, aggressive positivity is the word, yeah. the, the, the thing that he, and he was like, sometimes I need to turn it off because there's sometimes where there's, I hear someone with aggressive positivity and I don't connect with it because my, I'm going through trials and I want people out there to realize that, that when you're listening to Tony Torres, it's not, he's a master, not because he's perfect. He's a master because he hears no and keeps pushing through and is an absolute amazing, amazing human being. And, you know, and I think that that, that part, I want people to understand, you know, and I want people to, to know. Um, And really quick, one thing, uh, I mean, you know, we're, we're both believers on here, you know, we might as well line it back to the Bible. Like James, James one, two tells us to count it all joy when you go through trials for it's a testing of your faith. So, I mean, what more of an answer do you need than that right there? I mean, it's telling you you're going to go through them and the reason that you're going through, them. you know, so that, I mean, that, that's just one thing I've always leaned on also. Well, and I, I thank you for that, man, because it, it really is the time at the beach. A lot of times I'm sitting and, and I'm, I'm whining and complaining and I'm talking to God and he's like, Hey dummy, like I have taken you through all these things. Like he, he, you know, and I, I don't even think that I've shared this with, with anyone, but if you could keep a secret, Tony, I'll do it. So in June of 2020, um, we went, uh, during the pandemic time, everything got shut down, the salons, all the stuff, all the streams of income. Um, my, uh, wife has the idea that she wants to buy a home in park city. So we go Utah. through the, pro- yeah, in Utah. And so she wants to go through the process of it. We go through the process. The guy tells me I can't put a, a down payment down. I can only do a, a 2,500 fully refundable deposit. And I'm like, uh, okay, like what's the worst that could happen in this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I do it. We sit on that $2,500 from June of 2020 to May, to the end of May of 2021. Yeah. And God was able to multiply that $2,500. By the way, that $2,500 was not even ours. Our real estate agent went down to the title company because someone tried to undercut us. And he went down and put down his own money and then said, just send me the money whenever you need, whenever you can. And we sat on that $2,500 for a year in the greatest appreciation of of real estate in the history of man from June 2020, July 2020 to May, uh, uh, end of May 2021. And... Now, this happens, and you would think that, okay, this is going to solidify my faith that I don't care what happens. The world's going to end, and I'm just standing at the end. But I'm saying, like, there's times where I'm like, oh, you know, hey, Lord, will you please? I want to make sure, and, you know, this person calls me back. And God is like, are you kidding me? Like, I I took $2,500 and multiplied it the way that you did, and you had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I mean, just, do you have, do you have these times in your life where, where God will just show you like, are you, 
really? You're going to question me on this when I've done dang, 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 dang? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, like, I've sat here and and just like an absolute 10-year-old pitched a fit in my house because, like, like dinner wasn't right or... I mean, just the house looked like a mess or something. I mean, just acting like an absolute knucklehead, you know. And I mean, I'm almost done. <laughs> that's your daughter, um, right? Is that your daughter? Yep. That's how old, her. How old is your daughter, man? How old is your daughter? Four. Four. Oh, dude, Four. that is a great time, yeah. man. That is amazing. But yeah, time. man, I've been, I've been that knucklehead sitting here, coming inside, and you know, acting like you know, I'm the hero of the world. And when everything else isn't how I want it in the house, I'm just going to come in and barrel in like a grizzly bear being an absolute knucklehead. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've been that man. I've been that I've been there, you know, been laid off from a job, no income coming in and just, you know, just mad at life and, and all this kind of stuff. And then I get knocked upside the head and God will say, you know what, you know, I, I brought you through, I, I, I brought you through, uh, you know, your health issues You've never missed a meal. You've foregone a meal before, but you've never <laughs> missed a meal. I've, I've given you a wife. I've given you a little girl. I mean, there's, there's, there's women out there that can't get pregnant. I mean, they, they, all they want to do is have a baby. They would give anything that they have. They'd give their house, their Mercedes, anything they have to have a kid. God's given me a beautiful little girl and a beautiful wife. You know, I, I, you know, I mean, what more is it that everything else is just ancillary? It's just stuff. You know what I'm saying? We, who, who doesn't want to have millions of dollars and have no challenges in life? Who doesn't want that? But when you get to that point, you, that's when you start realizing that you don't, you start thinking you don't need God is when you do that. Yes. And so I like, and I say like very loosely when I say this, <laughs> I like some of the challenges I go through because they enlighten me. They help me get that nice slap in the face. And I am a firm believer also, Kelly, that every man in this life deserves a good butt kicking at one time in, in their life. Like that you need a good humble. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I just believe it. But, you know, I, I've been down the road of being a knucklehead and I can guarantee it will happen again. It will happen again where I'll just be, wake up on the wrong side of the bed and I'll just be in a mood and my wife will set me straight you know, she'll, or, or God will set me straight, you know, and, and sometimes he uses lessons that you really don't want to go through to teach you. You know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. we bought a new car, we bought a new car and I was upset because I didn't want a car payment at the time. Um, but then I got in a wreck the next day or like, like a week later, I got in a wreck in my brand new car. So now my insurance has gone up and I have to, and I had to go get my car fixed, obviously. Now they, they, they hit me, but like, you know, what, what if God's telling me like, dude, you had a car payment. I can give you a wreck if you want. And then you'll go get a Brent, another car and still own this car that you own or that you are paying off. Do you want that? Or do you just want the car payment you're dealing with and be blessed that you have a car when there's someone in a wheelchair down the street that can't even drive? Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's just, it's just humbling ways to just stay in your lane. Like you said, your bumpers, you know, and just realize that we've been, we've all been blessed. Um, and we can use the blessings that we have to go bless other people. I wish that I had the music and I'm going to get the music. So I'm going to get some, some sort of sentimental music, Tony, but this is the section Kenny where, G. Yeah, G. and I want to get some in there and we'll, I'll, I'll hit it in. And this is the time where you look into the screen and you tell your wife something or some things that she mm -hmm. hasn't heard that you haven't oh. told her that you oh. want to just appreciate her on that next level. Yeah, I would, I would do it right now. I'd say, Jaden, I love you. I'm, you're the love of my life and I, I could not do this without you. Um, I know it's so many hours, so many days, so many times and phone calls and times where it looks like I put other things ahead of you, but just know that you were never you were never the last thought in my mind. You were always the priority. I love you. And I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you, Charlotte, also, who's my daughter. I love you. And thank you just for being on this road with me. Yeah, man. 
Well, see, Kenny G would be good. We, we, you know, that would be a good one because then that would move into date night. You need to have date night tonight. Um, well, we have it every. We have it every weekend. We we, we make that a priority every it, weekend, man. It is is Tony even human? He needs to have a. Oh, cape. I'm human. Yeah. He needs to have a yeah. cape on, but don't have a I star know. on the cape like the Dallas. As a Cowboy matter of fact, star. on my way on my as a matter of fact, on my way back up here when the video wouldn't work before, I ran into the other room and I fell. <laughs> and I, I scraped my elbow. So yeah, I'm human. hundred <laughs> percent. So uh, Tony, you know, you know what's coming, man. I started the podcast because I wanted to take iconic figures like the, uh, you in the world. And I wanted to show my kids, Maddox and McKenna, that anything in the world is possible with the right attitude and, and the right work ethic. And you have shown that today in the nose, like understanding that no is an answer also. What advice would you have for Maddox, who's the ten-year-old superstar, just won the FNL championship? He was oh, the quarter, he was the quarterback. He got the interception uh, at the end of the game. They were driving down. The other team was driving down. Uh, they, uh, his team was up by six. The team was just about to score on the goal line. He, the guy throws a, 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 a pass. My son steps in front and takes it all the way down to the five-yard oh. line, uh, and I believe he was the offensive and defensive player of the game. So, Coach Gary, if you're listening out there, Maddox needs both. And we'll be playing for that team. For that's, hey, there we go. There we go. If, if you can't, uh, if, you're, if you're not watching, he just held up a Tennessee Titans hat. Um, so, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> hey, you know, we're not supposed to lie. We're not supposed to lie here, brother. <laughs> that's not biblical, right? So, and then there's, then there's my daughter. She's graduating from seventh grade today. And this woman, this little girl is so, I can't even call her a little girl. She's bigger than, she's taller than my wife. And she is just amazing. So what advice do you have for Maddox and McKenna? If you could use, use both their names, it would be awesome. Absolutely. Maddox and McKenna. Number one, I want you guys to know that you are awesome. Um, you are a blessing to the people around you, to your dad, to your mom, to the Dallas Cowboys. You guys, you, you're amazing. Um, but in all seriousness, I want you to do this for me. I want you to eliminate the four letter word can't from your vocabulary. Don't say it. Like in my home, it's not allowed to be said. I would rather my daughter say one of the profane words than the can't word. Because can't is an abilitative word. Won't is a decision word. Can't is an abilitative word and you can do anything that you set your mind to. So eliminate the word can't from your vocabulary. Get rid of it. It's not allowed in the Cardenas home at all. Second, and um, I would say to number one, listen to your dad because you, your dad is an amazing human being and let him teach you the amazing things in life to, to put the right people around you and not try to do it all on your own. Let people help you. Let people bless you. Let people love and speak into your life. And if that can be me one day, I would love to help you in any way that I can. But, you know, let people help you. Don't try to take on this world alone. And the last thing I will say, and this is the most important, is stick to your faith. When people tell you that what you're, you're doing is wrong and the reason that you're doing it is wrong and that they disagree with you remember that jesus was disagreed with by many he died for so many people that would never believe in him and just stick with your faith let that be the foundation of everything you do and he will guide you through it i promise tony you have been absolutely phenomenal core 13 capital i'm going to say it three times core 13 capital core 13 capital core 13 capital Check him out on LinkedIn, Tony Torres on LinkedIn. You have been amazing. I mean, you have blown my mind today, man. I mean, better than expected. I expected to have so much fun with you today. Um, and this was, this was beyond my expectation, man. Um, for those of you out there listening, um, make sure that you click all the links, check out all the sponsors, Samaritan's Feet. We talked about them. Uh, Cardenas Law Group in Las Vegas, a boutique law uh, firm that is honestly the greatest in the world. And it happens to be, I believe, the greatest lawyer in the world, which is my brother, Big Rob. Awesome. Big Rob love out him there. Already. Mr. Love him already. Mr. Michael Mina. You need to check that out. And guys, the hideout. The hideout's coming. I'm excited, man. The hideout's coming. The hideout's coming. The hideout's coming. So make sure Bye. that you check all the sponsors. Um, check out Tony. And I want to uh, say thank you to uh, Mr. Wayne Freeman, to uh, Mindy Trujillo. I want to say thank you to uh, to uh, 
Patrick Hummel, um, and every single out there uh, person out there that's listening. We are almost at a hundred thousand downloads right now, and we you every one of you listening has helped to be able to put us in the top one percent, the top one percent with no advertisement at all on our side. We have not paid for this. This has all been organic and it's all because you out there listening, you watching and Tony, you're a part of that man. And you have been a supporter. And I want to, I want to say thank you. Um, I want to, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Tennessee Titans too, because uh, Tony, I believe is going to become a fan at some point. And um, you honestly, Tony, you have just been phenomenal. Please tell your wife, I said hello and get back to that beautiful daughter. Um, any I last word, any last words for the crew, any, every single one of you watching this, I don't care what anyone says. You all are amazing people. You are a blessing. You are all awesome. There is greatness in each and every one of you have an amazing day. And I would love to link up with every single one of you. See ya, Tony. You're officially off the hot seat. <laughs>